We're going to look at Derek Hill's Donegal more closely in this video and explore the themes in the exhibition. And as we're going through the video, bear in mind that the most important lesson for you as an exam student is to have an opinion and to be able to qualify it. So if you liked the exhibition, what you learned from it, and if you didn't like the exhibition, what could have been better about it? But we're going to do a little bit of housekeeping to begin with and look at the big question of what is a museum and why do we have exhibitions at all? A museum is just a building where collections are stored and exhibited and the Glebe House and Gallery is an art museum. The traditional role of a museum is to gather a collection, to research it, to conserve and preserve it for future generations, but crucially to make it available for the current generation to enjoy and to learn from. I'm the curator here at the Glebe and the curator is a museum job that has two main roles. The first role is to look after a collection, to preserve it for future generations. And the second role is to look at the collection and figure out how it can be used by today's generation. So curators decide what you see when you come to a museum and into an exhibition. And it's always good to consider what the curator was trying to say when you're looking at this exhibition or at whatever exhibition you studied for your exam. Now obviously the artist is more important and the artist's work and the artist's intention when they were making the work is really what you should be concerned with. But if you're struggling with an exhibition, it can be quite good to wonder what the curator was trying to say. And examiners like to see that you understand both the artist's role and the curator's role in the exhibition. So now we'll look at the main themes in the exhibition, the theme of Garten, of Tory Island, and of the contemporary photography in the exhibition. They're all either paintings or photographs. There's a drawing and there's a, a little 3D piece. But for the most part, it's all very domestic in size. And there's nothing in this exhibition that I don't think you could imagine having at home. So it's not like maybe an exhibition that you've seen in the National Gallery or the Irish Museum of Modern Art, maybe where the work was huge in scale and also where the subject matter was more complicated and maybe the sort of thing you wouldn't want to look at every day. These are pictures that I think most people would be very comfortable looking at day in, day out in their own home environment. Derek Hill was an English painter who visited Donegal in the late 1940s to stay in Glenvay Castle and who really liked what he saw here. I think he found it, it was isolated certainly, but it was very rugged and very beautiful. And I think there wasn't a lot of visual arts in Donegal and maybe he saw the opportunity there to do something that hadn't been done before, to paint rural Donegal and to be the first person to paint rural Donegal in any kind of a comprehensive way. The garden part of this exhibition does refer to this exact part of Donegal and very few of the pieces in it are from much further away than five or six kilometres. There are two of Derek Hill's landscapes that were painted here. The first is called Garten from Harley's in Glendone and it was painted in 1958 so only a few years after he bought the house and moved in and was starting to settle here. The second painting is called Trenta Hillside and it was painted a little bit later. We don't know exactly, but we think it was around the 1970s. Both of these paintings reflect that rural Donegal was a small farming community at that stage. Since Derek made these paintings, life in rural Donegal has changed quite a lot and it's now a very residential part of the world. As I said earlier, Donegal was very isolated. It was almost completely separated from the rest of the Republic by Northern Ireland. Of course, there was free movement between the two jurisdictions. But during the 70s, that became more difficult because of the troubles. The net result of all of this was that where other parts of Ireland began to develop a tourist industry, Donegal didn't and did remain largely rural up until very, very recently. From an exam point of view, these are quite good conclusions to make from the paintings that you see here. Derek didn't paint anything that was contemporary or forward-looking. He really liked the wildness of Donegal. 
Derek Hill first went to Tory only a few years after he came to Donegal. On Derek's first few visits to the island, he had to stay with local families because there was no accommodation for visitors there. But after a few years, he rented a small building from Irish Lights and he used that both as his living accommodation and his studio. Derek returned to the island almost every year between then and his death in 2000 and found it such a rich source of inspiration that he really did some of his very best paintings on Tory. And they weren't just landscapes, he painted a lot of wonderful portraits. One of the things that I enjoy most about this exhibition is a series of small black and white photographs that Derek Hill took. They're little snapshots and I don't think Derek ever intended to exhibit them. They were probably just commercially printed in uh, local chemists. And this is a lovely way to give photographs like this their day in the sun, to let people see them. I think he probably took these photographs on his first few visits to the island before he realised he was going to form such a bond with the island and before he realised he was going to return so often. He doesn't seem to have as many photographs from later years. But the most surprising thing about his relationship with Tory Island was that he inspired the islanders to paint. There are paintings by three of the Tory Island artists in this exhibition, by Patsy Dan Rogers, by Rory Rogers and by James Dixon. And James Dixon was the first of the Tory artists. Now we'll talk in greater depth about Tory Island and the artist in the next video. So for the moment I think it's enough to know that these and many other islanders have created a very unique record of life on Tory Island over the past 60 years. The third theme in the exhibition, the theme of contemporary photography, doesn't fit as neatly into the exhibition title as the other two themes do simply because Derek Hill wouldn't have seen these photographs. They were made after his death. There's two Simon Birch photographs of windows in the exhibition. They're untitled and I always wonder why an artist chooses not to give a piece of work a title. Declan Doherty on the other hand uh, has two photographs here that do tell you what they're about. One of them is called Red Haired Boy and the other is called Taking the Ballot Box to the Island. So you can find more information about Derek Hill and Tory Island at the Glebe House and Gallery website, which is www.glebegallery.ie. And please use the comments section to ask any questions that you would like. Perhaps my favourite thing in the exhibition is just behind me. It's another Simon Birch photograph of the waiting room in Donegal Airport. So this breaks with the other themes in the exhibition and it shows us a very modern, a very contemporary view of Donegal. There are a couple of things you could think about at this stage. Almost all of these artists are from Donegal, so they're looking at something they know. Derek Hill, on the other hand, moved here from England. He lived in London and worked in Rome. So he was coming from a very cosmopolitan uh, life to a very rural and very left behind part of Ireland. So it's very interesting to see it through his eyes and to see his take on it. You could wonder, did he paint the things that he wanted to find? Certainly the photographers went looking for the subjects that they photographed. The Tory Islanders probably couldn't avoid the things that they painted because the island's so small they had no choice. And just ask yourselves, is this the Donegal that you know or that you think exists or existed in the past? In the next video, we'll look very closely at Tory Island, at Derek Hill's relationship with Tory, at the work that he made there, and at the Tory Island folk artists who are a very unique group of artists.